More than 100 nuclear power plants provide the electricity for one of every five homes and businesses in America. They are a vital part of our nation's future energy and environmental policy. Nuclear power plants are the nation's largest emission-free source of electricity because they don't burn anything to produce electricity. Used nuclear fuel is a byproduct of nuclear energy and is being managed effectively. America's used nuclear fuel management program includes shipping used fuel from nuclear plants to a remote underground disposal facility. Public safety is the priority every step of the way. It is ensured by a combination of protective measures. Super strong shipping containers that provide multiple layers of protection. Extensive planning and processes governing shipping routes and comprehensive regulations governing all facets of this program. The result is that the public and the environment are fully protected. Since 1964, in the U.S. alone, there have been thousands of safe shipments of nuclear fuel over more than 1.7 million miles. There have been more than 3,000 shipments of used nuclear fuel in the United States and more than 21,000 shipments of used nuclear fuel internationally. All of these shipments have taken place in containers designed to meet Nuclear Regulatory Commission or International Atomic Agency Commission standards. There's never been a release of the radioactive contents of a used nuclear fuel container during shipment. This record of safety is unparalleled when compared to other hazardous materials transportation shipments. The first layer of protection is the packaging itself for the used fuel rods. Nuclear energy is generated using fuel pellets made of compressed uranium. These pellets are assembled into columns and inserted into zirconium alloy tubes. The tubes are sealed with end plugs to form a fuel rod. These fuel rods are then grouped into fuel assemblies. When the fuel is changed in the reactor, used fuel rods are cooled in steel-lined pools before transport by truck or by train in protective containers to safe storage facilities. When transported by truck, the shipping containers have a stainless steel basket that holds the fuel assembly firmly in place. Two thick cylinders of steel surround the basket and form a cavity that is filled with lead which shields radiation. A steel lid then seals this cylinder. The outermost layer is a thick shielding material that prevents any release of radiation. The fuel assembly is then inserted into the container and the package is sealed securely with another steel lid. This sealed container is then carefully lowered onto a specially fitted flatbed truck and secured in place. Special impact limiters are installed as an additional safety precaution to absorb energy from any possible collision during transportation. Finally, a tarp or screen is added to cover the container and route. Rail containers are similar to truck containers but carry a heavier load so they can hold more fuel assemblies. Used nuclear fuel is transported in certified containers. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has certified numerous container designs which fall into two broad categories. The first incorporates three layers of metal, lead sandwiched between two layers of steel, and in the other certified design, the fuel is contained within nine to 15 inches of steel. As a safety precaution, all rail transporters are required to have buffer cars between the used fuel cars and other rail cars. It is likely that most used fuel shipments to a federal disposal facility will travel by rail in the future. Designers of used fuel containers will use both physical tests and computer modeling in order to show that the containers can withstand the hypothetical accident conditions. The safety and strength of these container designs has been verified in numerous physical tests that far exceed regulatory requirements. These robust shipping containers are specially designed to withstand even the most extreme accident scenarios. Shipping containers have been loaded onto a truck that was crashed first at 60 miles per hour and then at 80 miles per hour into a 700 ton concrete wall. They have been broadsided by a 120-ton locomotive traveling at 80 miles per hour. 
Another physical test involved dropping containers in a 30-foot freefall onto steel-reinforced concrete, comparable to hitting a concrete slab head-on at 120 miles an hour. They've been dropped onto a six-inch diameter spike, and the containers have been burned in a pool of aviation fuel for 90 minutes at temperatures of more than 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The result in each case, there were no ruptures or significant damage to the used fuel containers themselves. Although dented and charred, the containers remain totally intact to protect the used fuel they would carry. In the year 2000, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission released a report that re-examined the risk of used nuclear fuel shipments. In fact, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission found that using the most current analytical techniques and modeling, that the risks of used nuclear fuel shipments are even smaller than they thought 20 years ago. The industry also incorporates safety data from international studies. In tests involving a major propane gas explosion, and a jet engine rotor traveling at near supersonic speed. Again, the containers would have fully protected the fuel rods. Another facet of public safety involves the integrated planning process for shipments. This includes a coordinated approach among federal, state, and local officials. Federal authorities establish specific guidelines for the safest possible shipment of used fuel. One of the first aspects of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's actions is to approve any route over which used nuclear fuel might travel and examines these routes to make sure that the shipments will be secure. Armed escorts are required in urban areas. In addition, some states require escorts throughout their state. State and local authorities issue permits to shippers, conduct safety inspections of trains and trucks, and coordinate emergency preparedness efforts. DOE and, and other organizations have, have given us a lot of studies and have picked routes that, that has the minimal impact on large municipal areas and, and to bypass big cities. And I think that the key is, is to move this material safely from, from point A to point B. State and local authorities carefully monitor shipping routes, including satellite tracking, so they will always know exactly where shipments are at any minute. The precautions that go into spent nuclear fuel transport uh, whether it be the uh, design and engineering that goes into package production or the other precautions that are taken, the inspections that are done on the transport vehicles, radiological surveys and confirmation of compliance with DOT regulations makes spent fuel transport a safe activity. Used nuclear fuel is a solid material. It is not flammable and it cannot explode. In the event of a transportation accident, there would be no explosion as a result of the nuclear materials being present. In the event of a train accident involving a used nuclear transportation container, the containers are designed to withstand high temperature fires. In addition, the containers present a moving target, making them an unlikely choice for a terrorist attack. As the country's plan for disposing of used nuclear fuel moves forward, the proven record of safe transportation of used nuclear fuel ensures the highest levels of protection to the public and the environment.